Hi everyone, Andy Trice here, and today I want to talk to you about keying in video. Keying is a process of removing part of a video based upon the content of that video, and really commonly uh, referred to as color keying or green screen is when you film your subject, let's say on a big green backdrop, and then in your post-production you go ahead and remove the background by removing all that green area so that the end result you're left with just a subject. And you can take that subject and put them over top of another video or composite them however you want and it gives you a seamless transition of your subject into whatever your background content might be. Let's take a look at how you get started with keying, in particular color keying, in Premiere. So now we're in Premiere and I've got two videos. I've got a dog on a green screen and I've got a beach sequence. In the project window, select the dog and go to File, New, and select New Sequence from Clip. This is going to create a sequence, and we'll go ahead and hit play so you can see that we've got a dog on a green screen. Now what we want to do is remove the green background from this video clip. So in the Effects panel, go to Video Effects, then scroll down to Keying, and then let's select there's a lot of different options here, but we're going to select the ultra key effect. So just drag that and drop it onto the video clip. And then we need to select the key color. You'll notice as soon as we select the key color, the background disappears. We've got some artifacts though. So you can change the settings. So in this case, we just changed the pedestal and the matte generation and it cleaned it up. And we've now got a dog that's been isolated from the background. Now let's change the layers. So we've got the dog. Let's drag the beach behind the dog. And we're gonna, the, the beach clip you can see is a little bit smaller, so we'll make it bigger. And you can see that we now have a dog on the beach. It's pretty easy to do and very fast. You can see we've got the dog on the beach. But let's say we want to change it uh, a little bit for the achieve the desired effect. We want the sunset in frame, so let's go ahead and move the dog over so it doesn't block the sunset. We can also go ahead and correct the color of the dog so that it fits the sunset a little bit better. In fact, let's make it a little bit darker. And let's also increase contrast just a little bit. When we hit play, you can see that we now have a dog who's sitting on the beach. And you can see that that was really fast, really easy to do. Um, if I were to take a little bit more time, you, you would be able to get it even more precise. But I just wanted to show you really quickly how you can go about extracting content from one video and overlaying it on top of another. Okay, so we've got the cuteness factor covered. We've put a dog onto the beach using a green screen technique in Premiere. Now let's go ahead and take a look at After Effects and look at the, the, a similar technique. We're going to do color keying, but we're going to start making things explode. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're in After Effects, and you can see that I've got a video here flying over the Adobe office in San Francisco. This was captured with a remote control helicopter. And what I want to do is start adding some special effects. So I've already got an, an explosion that's from some stock photography. I'm going to drag that and drop it right onto the composition. And you can see that we've now got an explosion with a white background in the composition window. Uh, obviously this doesn't really fit the scene, but we're going to make it fit. First thing I'm going to do is make the explosion a little bit bigger. We can do that and uh, adjust the position of it where I, I want it to be positioned right at the intersection on the right hand side of the video. Uh, again, I'm going to move this around and I'm going to move the anchor point so that the anchor point for the video is right at the base of the explosion. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to use track motion on the base video so that the explosion actually follows the motion of the intersection in the bottom video. And so that as it's tracking, I want that tracking point to be at the base of the explosion. So we'll select the bottom video and hit track motion. We'll make sure that the motion target is our explosion, which is the iStock video. And now we need to move the tracking point. So we're going to make the tracking area slightly larger, and then we'll move that over to the intersection where I want motion to be tracked from and where I want the explosion to follow. So we've got that. Now we just hit the Analyze button, so we're tracking backwards. If you notice, I actually started at the end of the video clip because that's where I wanted the explosion to be, and I'm tracking backwards. This will take just a minute. 
And this is analyzing each frame to track the motion of that intersection. Looks like it's complete. We're gonna go ahead and hit apply. And this is actually going to take that motion and apply it to the video overlay, so the explosion video, so that the explosion video actually moves with the movement of the intersection. I'm going to change the opacity just so we can see the overlay and make sure that it's tracking appropriately. We can shift it just a little bit by moving the anchor point, make sure everything's lined up the way that we want it. I think it is. Now we're going to put opacity back up and let's get rid of that white background. In the effects window, let's scroll down to keying and select a linear color key. Drag and drop that right onto the explosion video. And then we're going to select the white background as the color to be keyed out. And you can see that we've now got an explosion overlaid over top of the video. We can add colors to the mat for the key. And we can adjust the matching tolerance. We're going to experiment with this a little bit, see what we can do to get it a little bit more accurate, get rid of the white border around it. And we can also uh, change the matching softness so that it's a little bit softer, so there's less of a seam. We'll zoom out. And you can see that we now have an explosion which follows motion and the white background has been removed. And as we animate through, it's pretty seamless. The colors don't match up 100%, so it doesn't look completely realistic. But um, you can get the idea where we have an explosion that tracks motion and, and with a little bit more correction, it will look like it was actually there. So now let's make the colors fit. I'm going to drag and drop the tritone effect and select highlight, midtone, and shadow colors from the base video. And as we do this, you'll see that the colors in the explosion overlay video start to match the colors from the base video. Still not perfect. We can tweak this a little bit more and um, adjust opacity uh, to get it to match perfectly. But you can get the general idea. We've now got an explosion overlaid over top of the base video. And when we play this back full size, it is going to look really nice. But you can see it's still not quite perfect. That explosion looks like it's just overlaid over top of the buildings. And we really want the explosion, the smoke, to look like it's billowing down the street and not just overlaid over top of the buildings. To do this, we'll select the pen tool and we're just gonna draw a mask with the explosion layer selected, and that mask, we're gonna draw it to follow the shape of the buildings. We'll scrub through, add just a few more points, and now we'll make the rest of the mask cover the entire top right corner so we don't lose any of the explosion, and then we'll bring it in again on the right-hand side so that it follows the contours of the building. And when we hit play, you'll see that you only see the explosion in the area of the mask. And this gives the illusion that it's the smoke is just billowing down the street. Let's adjust the mask a little bit, and we'll add some feather to the mask to make it blend a little bit nicer so that we don't have these really hard edges. I did this very quickly. Just wanted to show you how you can go about compositing video using both keying and masks to achieve a special effect. I could spend some more time cleaning this up and making the seams more transparent, but let's go ahead and look at the final result of this. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check out my blog at tricedesigns.com. And if you're not already a member of Creative Cloud, just head over to creative.adobe.com to become a member today and to learn more. Thanks.